All right. So um, the uh, the emergency response sector in Kenya uh, is uh, let me say 30 minutes before you get uh, someone to come and respond if you're involved in an accident. So um, we have uh, motorcycle taxis. I realized when I reached here, I didn't see any motorcycle taxi. So motorcycle taxis are like motorbikes, and uh, it's riding, and you sit behind, and then you pay. So here you order for Bolt, you order for uh, Uber. There you, when you order for Bolt and Uber, there's an option for a motorbike. Uh, so um, the emergency response has had many challenges in Kenya, specifically. Uh, 47% uh, in this context, I'm talking about motorcycle taxi drivers. 47% of them, when involved in accidents, will end up in the orthopedics or permanent injuries. 15% uh, will die, sadly. And 38% uh, who make it to the hospital will either have a first response uh, problem, either because of delayed time, or if not, uh, maybe because of uh, poor quality of uh, care that they'll receive. So most likely they'll reach there, but it will be delayed, and uh, yeah, more problems will top on that. So, um, uh, so these are the main reasons why uh, we get these uh, riders uh, falling into that situation. It's because of unqualified medical services, uh, untimely intervention, and mismanagement of the casualty. That is maybe at the point of the incident that the accidents happen. Uh, main challenges, again, that uh, build up to that is communication barrier, so delayed response, intervention time for them to reach to uh, care and payments. Very big issue. So we see where blockchain can fill the gap in uh, reducing this intervention time through smart contracts between the first responders and the riders. This is through uh, quality management. So you enter into a smart contract, you know you'll definitely get paid by this rider in case he's involved in an accident. And for the rider, he, he knows in case he reaches to the medical care center, he'll be able to get uh, quality treatment because it's a smart contract, you know. Money will not be paid unless quality is delivered. Uh, incentive program, this is between the rider as well and the first responder. So this is basically for preventive mechanism. So where the rider, you go a year, two years without getting into an accident, and then you're able to uh, get incentivized with token, I'd say. You go, uh, you reduce your intervention time between 10 to five minutes per incident, you get incentivized with token. So all this is just to be able to help preventive, either the rider to be able to you know, behave well on the platform by riding well, and the first responder to keep uh, delivering faster. Then data storage, very important. Uh, so we store data on the platform. The main data we want to store right now is uh, the type of injury and also the frequency of accidents. Frequency of accidents will help the rider in case he wants to get maybe asset financing or in case he wants to um, uh, negotiate a better insurance package. You know, I've been in an accident once in two years, so I think I should pay less for a health cover, things, something like this. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so basically, smart contracts, like I've explained, and uh, I'll just jump to the in incentive as well for both the rider and the first responder, and as well the usage of data to either earn income or improve services. So I'll jump straight to RideSafe, who we are. Um, this is the problem that we're solving currently. 20% of riders last year died in accidents. Um, sorry, 270 died in accidents. 20% of road accidents were riders. So if out of 100, 20% were riders who were involved in road accidents. And over 4 million people depend on these riders for a living. So basically, we're talking about, I'm a rider, I have to feed my wife, I have to feed my kids, I have to take them to school. So the number keeps growing bigger. The market is quite big. In Kenya alone, we have over 1.5 million riders. That is the motorcycle taxi riders. Africa, general, generally, we have uh, 8 million plus. Uh, you can see uh, Nigeria and uh, Egypt and South Africa really building fast in the industry. Yeah, the barrier to entry is almost zero. If you can kick your bike and ride, you can carry someone. So anyone can become a rider, practically. And uh, companies are coming in uh, Africa, which are helping with assembly plants for motorbikes. So basically, you can get a bike for almost, I think, uh, let me say $200, yeah? You get a bike, then you pay slowly. So easy way to jump into the business. Um, so what we want to do is build an affordable, reliable, quality, fast response on the blockchain with the small aspects I showed you up there. Uh, a value proposition, distributed costs. You can rush the rider to the medical center or get a fast responder to them, but this is Africa. You don't have money, you're not going to get care. So you find out distributing the cost on the platform so that uh, when you reach there, you don't have to worry about, will I have to pay for this or not? It's already paid for. So increased hospital options, that's a fast responder options as well, less intervention time, which is our main goal here. 
family care, we get your next of kin in, informed in case you're involved in an accident. And yeah, we guarantee high quality care as well because uh, you're in a contract with the first responder to respond. So briefly, I'll show you how our app works. You just download the application. This is for the rider. You have uh, uh, your profile. We want to make it as easy as possible because we understand it's an accident incident. So you want to press the SOS as fast as possible. And then it zones out the nearest first responder for you to get care. Um, we are going to work on a future of IoT very soon so that you can have devices mounted on the bikes. In case a rider is involved in an accident, we get the information easier and faster. But that's uh, level two of the product. So for a first responder, your profile, they have a screen that will be working uh, even when your phone is, is not off, but okay, when you're not on the app, off app features. So it will be scanning always for in case an SOS has been sent and zoning within your area if someone is injured. Uh, yeah, that's, you can perform treatment and you also have a profile. So the service rating, we also hope we can work with um, Utu <laughs> on the side of trust because uh, those are ratings given by riders who have got treatment. So yeah, uh, still a human input there, but if you can work with Utu, maybe we can be able to verify this uh, through trust, trusting a system. Yeah, uh, so like I explained earlier on, how we want to work with the blockchain through incentives, smart contracts, and trust. So these incentives will be paid ideally in token, right? So the rider has a token in incentives. The first responder has token in incentives. And uh, so if I'm a first responder and I want to get a ride, uh, and I have tokens in incentives, and I know who else would use the token in incentive, who knows the value of it, it's the rider. So I'll, I can order a ride and pay with my incentive token, you know, to the rider. And the same way, if the rider has incentive tokens and his daughter is sick, he could go to the same medical center that responded previously and say, hey guys, I have these tokens, you know, I don't know how much would it cost to, so you change the value and uh, as well uh, you exchange in that way. So it's basically building an economy of trust within each other because uh, that will be the end goal. If I trust you, you trust me and you know, we're working together in the same uh, ecosystem, it will build a, a, a better community for them both. Um, so this is our competitor analysis. Uh, basically, NHIF is the national health uh, insurer and uh, yeah, affordable of course, but uh, reliability, it's national health, quality, pretty low, and uh, it's not really all around. Uh, there's Riziki, really trying, they're affordable, they have good quality, but uh, they can't be reliable because they also depend on the common emergency response services, which is about 30 minutes again to get care. And then there's family, which everyone rushes to family first. You know, I mean, I'm injured, call my mom, I'm injured, call my wife, help me with the bill or something like this. And so we hope we could be able to be affordable, reliable, because we are trying to reduce intervention time, give quality care, and at the same time, all around care, meaning next of kin gets in involved in case you're in an accident and they get informed quickly. Uh, we will be having a bright future. Our business model is we charge 30% of uh, monthly contributions. So these riders make uh, monthly contributions on the platform. And that's why it sounds like microinsurance. So that when they get an accident, we give them up to $30 of care per incident. And that's why it sounds like microinsurance. It's a microinsurance model, but it's not a microinsurance company. It is actually emergency response. So we're looking at having a future of uh, by 2023. Uh, getting uh, the 30% revenue, about $7.5 uh, million. And uh, this is uh, using about uh, 200, roughly about 200,000 riders on the platform. I'll sh quickly show you milestones, as you can see where we are right now. RideSafe started in January 2018, we were incorporated in May, uh, joined Eternity Ventures uh, in June. Uh, after we were able to complete a USSD pilot with over 600 riders, so we knew that these riders really need this service. And then uh, closed seed funding uh, early this year with uh, Eternity Ventures as well. And we were selected to, we'll be the first African company to attend the Dubai Startup uh, Hub, Dubai Startup Chambers. Uh, so it's a mentorship, cross-border mentorship program that's being organized in Dubai. And uh, we will be presenting, maybe you guys will share the link as well, so that uh, on our forum you guys can share and uh, move around with it. Uh, so far we have partnered with many institutions big massive uh, associations for riders with over 100,000 riders. And the moment we launch our application, we will be able to onboard these riders on our platform. And yeah, we see a very bright future with this. Um, these are the guys who work with hospitals, ambulances, and doctors. Anyone who can respond can be joined on our platform. Yeah, these are our partners, Eternity Blockchain as well. Uh, the Hub, Lina Medical Services. We really work with the medical centers because they're the ones who actually uh, deliver the service for us. And uh, yeah. Associations, uh, media, personalities. This is my team, me, myself, Jassy, Peter, the CTO, George, uh, his rider relations, 
Manasseh, first responder, and Elizabeth Baker, business advisor. So currently, we are trying to raise 500K to be able to uh, expand to other markets. We are in Nairobi right now currently, and uh, we, are, we, have picked, we have got many people who have picked interest from Uganda, Rwanda, and Tanzania. And so we want to open regional offices, you know, reach up to 500K, uh, probably, and implement a regional campaign. Yeah. So that's right, Seth. And uh, thank you very much. If you have any questions for me, you can meet me outside there, and we can discuss more about this. So let's come together and... Uh, be able to give this care to these people who really need it and build trust on blockchain as well. Thank you. Thank you, Benson.